messages to everyone. Oops. I appreciate all your welcoming messages, Nicole. So thank you for that. Um, and as you were going through all of that, I was kind of watching our monitor screen here on the side and watching everyone who was joining our Zoom class this evening. And I recognized so many names from our Let's Paint community. So thank you all, everyone, for tuning in. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. Uh, you're welcome to paint along with me this evening. Many of you do. Um, however, if it's too late in the day, you're too tired, you've had too busy a day, and you'd rather just kick back, sit back, watch and relax, or maybe take notes, and then paint along with the recording, that is A-OK -okay with me. First and foremost, I want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. It's never too late to paint another Santa to add to your collection. So tonight we are going to do Star of Wonder Santa. I painted mine on a 10 by 10 canvas. And although the background is black, many of you asked, did I start with a black canvas? And the answer is no. If you looked at the supply list, the supply list indicated that I used a white canvas. And let me just take one quick minute to explain why I did not use a black canvas. Most of uh, what you're gonna see here is the red of Santa and maybe the white trim here. If we were to paint, the red, even if you did a special undercoat, which you can do artistically to kind of make those reds pop a little bit more against the dark background. Even if we did that, we would be painting and probably quick drying it, painting and quick drying it till we got that nice, bright, crisp red that we want. So rather than do all of that, I am starting with a white canvas. And let's just go ahead and go overhead, Nicole. And I just want to share with everyone what I did to start my canvas. As I said, this is a 10 by 10 canvas. There is a free downloadable pattern. If you haven't found it yet, it's there on the registration sheet where you signed up. And Nicole's probably going to put the uh, link to that in the uh, chat section during tonight's uh, program. So what I do when I get my pattern is you can either cut the pattern apart and tape it together as it was given to you tiled so that you could print it out from an eight and a half by 11 printer at home. Uh, or you can, once you um, get that pattern, you can trace it out onto tracing paper. I often do the tracing paper because this helps me. It enables me to kind of, when I position this on something, I can kind of see through that tracing paper to know where I have it placed. And then I use an artist transfer paper. It's called gray graphite. And I use an artist stylus tool, which is some, similar to like a dead ballpoint pen. And when you position your canvas uh, underneath the pattern and you have it exactly where you want it, you're going to put the dark side of your transfer paper uh, directly down, sandwiching it between the surface, your canvas, and between the... Um, pattern and then you use this stylist or dead ball point pen to tree trace over your pattern lines and what that does is it does transfer the pattern directly onto your surface for you and that's what I've got here and I'll raise this up to the camera so that you can see it up close and I've transferred just the basic pattern lines I didn't do any detail lines and I'm just going to share with you that my canvas here is a 10 by 10. And because we're going to be painting at some point in class tonight, all of this black background around our Santa, I didn't wanna have to hang on to the edges. So I actually made a couple tape loops uh, with blue painter's tape. And I taped my canvas directly onto uh, just a scrap board here. And this is just a scrap mat board. Um, and so, I can hold on to the mat board here like you see, or I can hold it from the top without getting my fingers on the black of our background as we get ready to do that. So that is where I am at this point. And um, as we've said earlier, Stephen White is here with me tonight at the Plaid Crafts Studios here. So if you have any questions, go ahead and use that chat, type them in, and Stephen's either gonna try and answer them or he'll pass them on to me. So at this point in time, let's go ahead and get some paint out onto our palette and let's start painting. I am working this evening with the Folk Art Multi-Surface Paints. You can use the regular Folk Art Matte if you'd rather have that or you have that at home, or you can use a combination of the two. The Multi-Surface Formula Paints are water-based, non-toxic, acrylic 
paints, easy to clean up with soap and water. But the, what's great about the multi-surface is it works on canvas like we're doing tonight, but it works on wood, on tin, on terracotta, on glass, on fabric, so many different surfaces. And I love this paint because I think it blends well. It um, is beautiful, rich and creamy in consistency as it comes from the bottle. And this is what I'm gonna paint with tonight. The color I just put out on my palette is my go-to Christmas color. This is called Apple Red. I'm gonna put out Apple Red. I'm gonna put out, and you can go ahead and do this with me if you're painting along tonight. I'm gonna put out a gray that's my new favorite gray. This is called um, French, there we go. It's called um, uh, classic French gray. You can also use a medium gray, whatever kind of gray you wanna work with. And then I'm also gonna put out some white and I am using wicker white. You can also use titanium white. And then I'm also going to put out on my palette tonight a little tiny bit of a skin color. Um, I call this cool bisque, but we can also make a skin color if you don't have this. This is a beautiful, uh, very pale Caucasian color. There's so little flesh. It's just a little bit of a side profile of his face. And so if you don't have cool bisque, I'll teach you when we get to that point how to mix a skin color or flesh color for a Caucasian Santa. So let's just go ahead and pick up a brush right now and let's just dive right in. I want to start painting my red areas first. Normally I love to do a Santa Claus face and I like to have personality or someone visiting me in the studio when I'm painting, but tonight I want to get the red on there. So I'm going to take a number 12 flat brush. I'm going to load both sides of the brush by stroking into the puddle of our apple red. And then let's just go ahead and begin painting. And I use the chisel edge of my brush to go right up along the pattern lines. And I'm showing you right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint the red areas of his cap first. So go ahead and begin with your um, brush loaded with your apple red. And I wanna tell you to use that chisel edge of the brush to kind of, and kind of wiggle along that fur line there and just get nice, long, smooth strokes here as you are painting that in. Do not paint like you're going short, choppy little strokes, all little ones, because you're gonna get lots and lots of brush marks. You might probably can see it there and you're gonna retrace over it after you kind of paint it in and get a nice, long, smooth application so it's going to be smooth for us in the next steps that we're gonna do. Don't hesitate to turn your work around, upside down, sideways, so that you can stroke towards you. And I am going to, all the red areas are uh, the base of the cap, and then there's a little bit beyond this where the heart is going to be. So we are going to just do a long, smooth stroke for the bulk of his hat. And then there's a little bit, as we get up to that pom-pom, beyond where the little stripe is, it's gonna be a pattern of a, of a heart there. The heart, uh, if you wanna make your heart red, you can go ahead and paint that heart red at this time. I made mine green. Let me bring this over a little bit closer. This is what I'm talking about here, this little band or the decoration on his hat. I made my little, um, heart green. There was a question there. How did I do something and I missed it? That was Alyssa. And she said, how did you do that so fast? Oh, <laughs> Alyssa, I have been painting since I was a teenager. And let me tell you that I know that was just a couple years ago, but <laughs> I just tend to paint fast. I'm a fast painter. I've been painting for many, many years and I will probably continue to paint fast tonight just so that we can get our project done at a fairly reasonable time. Let me just share with you also, don't use a very small brush. The larger you can use a brush in a smaller amount of area, the fewer the brush strokes you have to make. And also, like I said, make sure your brush is properly loaded and then try and do long, smooth strokes to kind of even it out. 
If you are using a small brush in a large area, obviously it's gonna take you a lot longer to, to cover an area. So just kind of, it's training, I guess. I've been painting for so long and I have trained myself to use a larger brush, a brush that's good and full of paint and, uh, you know, just kind of practice, I guess. The more you do something, the more easier it is for you, the easier and the more comfortable it feels. That was a very good question though. <laughs> Thank you for asking that. I guess it just comes with practice. I am working on what is the bottom of his coat right now, and I am going to turn my work around so that the chisel edge of my brush can come up right next to that fur with that kind of wavy line. And if there are any other questions, go ahead and ask them, and Stephen's either going to try and help me and answer them himself or pass them on to me. I'm here to help you all. We're gonna have fun tonight. If you did not grab yourself a heat tool, you may want to have a hairdryer nearby in case we need to dry any steps along the way. Now, before I go too much further, let me just show you on mine here, if you all wanna take a look here, I did start out at the hat. We did the body of the hat first, and then we came up with that little tip here, or part of his stocking part of cap. I came down here onto like his chest area and then this arm that's extended here. And then I did the bottom of the coat area, but I'm not done with the red. I want you all to notice that there is a belly section here right near the belt and the belt buckle. So we need to cover that in red. And there's a tiny little triangle here at the back near his bag. That's red also. So I don't want you to forget those areas. So just keep that red, apple red paint in your brush until we get all of this completely painted. And don't forget to turn your work if you find that's easier. I always do. Okay. So now my red is pretty much painted in. So I'm going to clean the red out of my paintbrush now. And I have a basin of water here off to the side. Uh, should you use gap lines? You, you're welcome to. Um, on mine, I can still see my pattern lines as an example you'll want to know where this arm is. I can still see through the red that I have on here. So I didn't leave myself a little cheat line. If that works better for you, then yes, by all means, you're welcome to do that. I cleaned the brush it with the water on my basin and now I'm really pinching it on a paper towel here because I want to remove that excess moisture. And let's go ahead and get um, one more color out I did not get out and that is our yellow ochre. Let's get some yellow ochre out onto the palette. And that'll be the base color for Santa's uh, bag of toys here. His satchel that he's got over is flung over his shoulder. And let's just go ahead and paint that in. So we've got the same brush. It's a number 12 flat brush. I've loaded it with the yellow ochre. And I'm again, <clears throat> excuse me, doing long smooth strokes to kind of paint in that bag of toys. I'm turning my work and I'm using the chisel edge of the brush in the opposite direction and come up real close to that red. That red should be starting to set up by now. So it might not be exactly a stark white or wet. So you should be able to move up right along next to it. And there's a little bit that comes down towards his wrist or where his mitten is. And then the extra part of the bag, the opening part or the opening section of the bag is right on the other side of the mitten. So don't miss out on that. And I'm just gonna do a little wavy line at the very opening of the bag.
Long, smooth strokes will even out your, your base coating. And I now have my bag painted with the yellow ochre. While we still have the yellow ochre in our brush though, before we clean that out, let's just put a little undercoat here of yellow ochre on this star. Now I did come back later and I did the, the beautiful, highly pigmented metallic gold paint called Treasure Gold. That was on your supply list and that's what we're really gonna paint this star with. But it helps sometimes to have an undercoat of an acrylic color. And so we're just gonna use this um, yellow ochre as the base for our star. And I start out at the points when I'm painting a star and I use that chisel edge of the brush and I stroke in towards the middle. And I'll do that on both sides of each little point and stroking in towards the middle until all five points are completely painted. And then what we're going to do is wipe that brush on your paper towel. And let's go ahead, um, I think once I wipe it all out, I think I'm okay. Let's go ahead now on this face area. I'm still gonna use my number 12 flat brush, but if you find out that this is too big of a brush for you and you'd rather switch down, um, I think on the supply list, I put down a number eight or maybe even a number six. You hey, can Chris, switch down. Yeah. Would you mind moving your um, completed painting up? Like take it out from under the, yeah, there we go. Okay, is that better? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Stephen. Um, so what I was saying is we're going to do our flesh area first, which is just the profile of his face and his little button nose. I'm going to still work with my large brush, kind of going back to that conversation earlier. Use as big a brush as you can to cover a small area. And so I'm just going to paint in that face area. And I am working around, I'm going to bring it up so you can see, I'm working around the hair that we're going to come back and paint later. I also transferred a little bit of um, kind of like a V shape for the eye there. If you'll see there's like a the side profile of the eye. And I'm going to paint right over that because I'm going to be able to see that underneath this base coat. So there's my face. There's so little space. And I covered it real quickly using that number 12 flat brush. But like I said, if you feel a little uncomfortable trying to use this big of a brush in a small little space, feel free to go ahead and transfer down to a smaller size. We're gonna clean the flesh out of our paintbrush. So that cool bisque is now gonna get cleaned out of that brush because we're gonna come back with another color right now. And I'm adding that new color onto my palette and that is our green. And that is classic green. That's the darker of the two greens that we're gonna work with tonight. And that classic green is what we're gonna to use to paint that one single mitten that is showing. and I am really squeezing my brush after I've cleaned it well. I wanna make sure that all the water is out of that number 12 flat brush. I'm gonna load that brush, both sides of the brush with our classic green, and then let's just paint in this mitten. There's also that little heart there that I told you I painted green. If you want to, you can paint that with this same color green at this time. So right now we're just gonna go with a little bit of a thumb and then using that to kind of make a backward C, we're gonna fill in that mitten shape. Chris, would you mind talking about what um, the brand of brushes you're using are? Yeah, I'm happy to do that. I'm using a green handled paintbrush. This is the Folk Art One Stroke paintbrush. This is um, a beautiful brush line in that they have a beautiful snap and what we, when we say a snap, that means like when we put pressure on this brush and it kind of fattens, flattens out, when I go to do a half stroke or if I, I'm putting pressure on, it springs back up beautifully and I, it maintains a nice chisel edge. So that's the brush I'm working with tonight. And there's another question. Would you, would <laughs> white green also work for the part of the hand that you're doing now? 
Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Any green that you have will work beautifully. I'm just using this because classic green and or uh, even a bright green. Platt has a color called bright green. They're both basic Christmassy green colors. And I think they make beautiful um, green to add to this. But gosh, any green would work. We're going to come back and lighten up some of these green areas with that lime green that we have. And the difference between the two, I'll put a little bit of lime green out on my palette so maybe you can see. Oops. This is a very um, yellowy green color. Well, I might be getting a bottle that has, there we go. So this is <clears throat> the classic green. And this is the lime green, which is a beautiful yellowy green color. And I can even bring those up closer to the, camera so that you can even see the difference in the colors. One's kind of a medium green and one's a very bright yellowy green color. Those are the two colors I'm working with tonight. And those will be the colors that I'll work with on the heart that's in Santa's cap, the mitten. And then when we get to doing our tree, that'll be that color as well. Okay, let me put that back in place for you. <laughs> Chris, um, Sue pointed out that you were going to tell us how to make a flesh color on the face if we didn't have cool bits. Yes, perfect. Okay, so if you <clears throat> want to start to make a flesh color, you're going to start with a little bit of your wicker white. I'll bring some right over here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to add to that some of your yellow ochre, which is the same color we did for the Santa's bag. So I'm picking up just a little bit of yellow ochre on the back side of my palette knife. And because you're using such a small amount of paint, you can even kind of brush mix this together. I'm using a palette knife as though I'm going to have a quite a bit of a flesh area. So what I did when I mixed the yellow ochre to the white, I end up with kind of a creamy, yellowy off-white color, okay? Then what I'm gonna do to that, I wanna pink that up. I wanna skin tone it up. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of our apple red. When you're mixing colors, it's always best to start with your lightest value first and then add in the darker values to it. If you start with a dark value and then you start adding light to it, you're gonna keep adding white and more light and more light. And you'll end up with the biggest pile of paint that you'll ever have. So always use the lightest color first and then add increments, very small little increments of your darker colors all along. And a little bit of apple red is starting to pink this up, starting to make it look more skin tony. I'm gonna add just a little bit more. You could see I touched some off to the side there. And you can get whatever kind of skin tone color you want. But you can see here that this is turning out to be very, very close to what I uh, poured out of my bottle here. My bottle was the Cool Bisque and my mixed skin here is very close to what I got. And you could keep playing with it a little bit more. This might have a little more pink tone to it right now. So I could add a little bit more apple red to this and I'd get very, very close to that. So that's how you can mix a flesh color. Thank you, Stephen, for reminding me. Or was that Sue you said? Yeah. Okay. All right, so where are we right now, folks? We've got our red done. We've got our yellow ochre on his bag done. We've added the green mitten and the green heart. We've added a yellow ochre to our star and we have our flesh mix on there. Let's go ahead and get um, with the gray that you have out on your palette. You can use classic French gray, medium gray. If you don't have either of those, you can mix your white and your black and come up with a gray. But with that gray, and I'm going to drop down probably to maybe a number eight flat brush. Um, and I'm going to just roughly base in anywhere that there's fur. So I'm going to start up here at the pom-pom. And I am just real rough making little scallopy marks along the outside edge of that pom-pom. It's not exact to the pattern. I'm just kind of putting the color on and basing it in. And I'm gonna do that here along the fur on trim on his hat. The gray that you um, 
are putting on now. I love that classic French gray. It has a little bit of a blue tint to it, but that doesn't mean that's the only gray you could use. Like I said, you can mix your own gray, adding some black and some white. You can use a medium gray. Steel gray is another gray that Plaid makes and it's available in the matte formula as well as the multi-surface. It's a very light, light gray. I like a little bit darker gray down first on our flesh, I'm sorry, on our fur areas, because I like to see the contrast when we get to doing the actual fur itself. So there's a pom-pom, there's trim on his hat, there's trim at the wrist, and then we have some fur down here at the base of his coat. And on this particular base, like we've already based in everything so far, I've always said, you've heard me say long, smooth strokes so that you don't see a lot of brush marks. On the fur areas, I really don't care because we're gonna do, add some texture. So if you wanna do short little choppy strokes, that's fine with me. We This is all gonna get covered up, or I should say most of this will get covered up as we put the texture on the fur. Just kind of slap that paint on to get the paint on as a base. And I'm doing this just really quickly. I'm not worried too much about brush strokes. I'm not worried about, just more worried about getting the cover on there, really stroking over the weave of the canvas to make sure that I don't have any pinholes. Chris, well, can I you still have... slide your canvas up a little bit? Mm -hmm. Let me just bring it up first too, so I can show you. Uh, let's look at this hemline. See, when I said I'm not worried about brush strokes, I've got a lot of short little choppy brush strokes there. When you compare that to like the red coat above it where I did the long smooth coats, I'm not worried about the texture that I'm building here with this base, okay? I was worried about not putting it here in the red. Hope that makes sense. Now, while we still have the gray in our smaller brush, let's go ahead and undercoat on Santa here, he's got a, again, it's a profile Santa. So we just see part of the, his hairline here and part of his beard. So I'm just going to take that gray paint and I'm not doing the mustache, but I am doing the beard. And I'm just coming out with little wisps here at the end. We're gonna finalize this with a lot more detail when we start adding the white strokes on top. But for now, we just want to get a good base of a gray undercoat underneath his beard and work around that mustache. You can see I'm starting to work around the mustache here. And I'm going to leave that mustache white right now. Do you bring Come the up. gray over uh, the edge of the canvas on the bottom? Did I bring it over on the edge here? I'm working on a canvas panel tonight. If you're working with an artist canvas, you could cover um, whatever you're painting on the top around the edges, or because our background, a background is going to be all black, you could just even bring the black down across the bottom of your uh, stretched canvas. I think that's what I would rather do if I were doing this not on a, this was a canvas panel also. If I was doing this on a canvas, whether it was uh, maybe one inch canvas or it could have been a gallery wrap maybe that you're working on, I think I would do the whole outside side edges with black. Just because I think that would be more striking. Good questions, y'all. And I am still using that small, smaller brush number six or a number eight, whichever is comfortable for you. And I'm just kind of basing in some of the gray then on the side of his face or side of his hair, and then that little bit of a beard. And let's go ahead, do one more thing here. Gonna clean that out of my brush. I'm gonna add one more color to our palette right now, and that is Pueblo. Pueblo is the color that I love to use for shading on flesh areas. It looks very much like a terracotta pot. And that is also part of one of the colors that we're gonna use to mix to do our tree trunk. So let's go ahead and just simply take your number 12 flat brush 
Oh, I'm sorry, one more color. We're gonna add some of your black. And I'm using licorice tonight. If you don't have licorice, you could use pure black. Does the paint dry very fast? I'm working with acrylics here. Everything that I have done so far is dry. Um, because I don't have a thick amount of paint on my canvas, and because I've been talking for a while too, it's out here, it's already dry. Plus it might be studio lights that I'm sitting under too that it's drying quickly. If yours is not drying quickly and you wanna have it dry to be able to move on, go ahead and use a heat tool like a hair dryer, um, and that will help speed up your drying time. All right, so what I wanna do now is I wanna get my tree trunk in here and I'm going to just simply take my number 12 flat brush and I'm gonna use the Pueblo that we just put out that I'm gonna use for later on the face. But for now, I'm gonna load the brush, both sides of the brush with our Pueblo. And I'm just ever so lightly, let me caution you, ever so lightly touch into the black. Black is very, very strong, whether you're using licorice or pure black and a little bit of it goes a very, very long way. So you can see how that black has already darkened that Pueblo. So now I'm gonna pick up a little bit more Pueblo and I am just brush mixing here on my palette till I get a pleasing darker brown. Not quite a burnt umber, but just a darker brown. Once you have that darker brown, you can turn your work so that you're gonna use the chisel edge of the brush and you're gonna kind of scoot back and forth. And I usually start right here at the bottom or the V here of where our star is. And I'm gonna go all the way down. If you did not transfer this pattern line or the, the trunk or kind of the pole of the tree, don't worry because it doesn't have to be exact. And you can see I'm just almost like seesawing. I'm chiseling back and forth on the chisel edge of the brush and I'm just kind of sawing in using that brush mix of the Pueblo and our licorice. And if you have some edges, side edges to your tree trunk that you don't like, don't worry, because remember, we're gonna come back with some black right next to this. So don't, don't even hesitate. I don't need it to be a straight line on both sides. My tree trunk can have some texture. It can be wider here at the bottom. It could be smaller up at the top. Could even have a little bump in the road like this one right here has a little bump on the road. That's all we're gonna do to our tree trunk right now. Okay, I'm gonna clean that brown out of my brush and I'm gonna dry it really well on my paper towel. Now let's go back and start working on his face because <clears throat> that's the expert, uh, um, the fun part of it. You can really kind of see it start to come to life. So I've got that number 12 flat brush and I am going to fill it with my skin mixture. So either the skin mixture or if you were basing in with cool bisque, load your brush up with that. And I always load both sides of that flat brush. Then what I'm going to do is dip a corner of my brush or side load stroking into the puddle, uh, the puddle of Pueblo. And I'm gonna come here to my palette and I'm gonna blend on the palette so that I have a brush that is mostly my skin color with just a little bit of blending of the Pueblo on the other side. So I have blended well on my palette here so that when I go to make a stroke, I'm gonna have a nice, even gradual blend of my shading color into my flesh color, okay? And I want you all to do the same thing. Now there's so little face showing. So let me bring this up and I'll show you what we're gonna do. The side of the brush that has the shading in it, the Pueblo is gonna be right up here at the front of his face going down to the hairline here. So it's basically across the forehead area. So just right up next to the fur is where we're gonna put that Pueblo. And you can see it here on my finished piece. So. I'm going to put this down and I am going to, when I put that color on, I am using a short choppy little stroke. I'm patting that color on rather than trying to do a long smooth stroke. I'm just patting that on and working that in. Can you see that right there? So now we have shaded the side of his face or kind of the forehead area. 
I'm going to bring that color down around the little swirls of where his hairline is because the hair is going to be on top of the face. So we want to put a little shading there. And then one more tiny, tiny little area that we're going to shade. When you look at his nose, we want to distinguish the tip of his nose <clears throat> from his face. So I'm going to turn this upside down. I'm going to put the Pueblo side of my brush right up next to that like nostril area and put just a tiny little bit of color right there so that when I bring it face around, now we've kind of really separated that bulbous part of the side of his nose, okay? I'm gonna wipe this out of my brush. I don't wanna wet it, but I'm gonna wipe that out to remove the Pueblo. And now I wanna blush his cheeks a little bit and blush the tip of his nose. So I'm gonna fill my brush again with our flesh color cool bisque or your mixture. I'm going to tip just a tiny little bit of that brush into my apple red and bring it over here to blend. I don't want to use the apple red straight, but I want to use the apple red as it mixes or blends well with my flesh color. And it's going to make a beautiful rosy cheek color. You could even test it first on your surface and then come back and add a little bit more red if you want more depending upon how rosy a cheek you want your Santa to have. The, I'm going to bring this up so you can see the rosy cheeks. It's right up next to the hairline. So the side of my brush that has the apple red in it is going to be next to the hairline. And I'm going to let that blend out a little bit onto his face. And like I said, if you want to test first and then determine if you like to have a little bit more blush on his cheeks. I don't want him to look like he's Mrs. Claus, which he got into the Maybelline blush, but I do want him to have a rosy cheek. Those of you that have painted with me before, you know I love a rosy cheek Santa. He's been out in the cold. And so I now have a nice pink rosy cheek there. And I'm going to carry through at the very tip of his nose with a little bit of that same loaded pink and I'm gonna give him a rosy, rosy cheek on, or I'm sorry, tip of his nose. So I'm just putting a little bit of that blush out there on the tip of his nose as well. Okay? All right, now I'm gonna clean that brush now and let's pick up our liner brush because we wanna give him his eye. When you look at the eye, both on your pattern or you can look at my finished sample up here, it is a profile of an eye. So we're going to have kind of like a V shape, and then we're going to fill it in just ever so slightly. So I'm going to use a liner brush. I'm going to get that liner brush wet first, and then I'm going to come over here to my uh, licorice, my black color. I want this to be black, and I'll bring my painted piece up so you can see uh, if we can get it to focus. There we go. I can still see where that little eye shape is going to be on mine. So um, if you can't see yours and you want to take a minute and pencil it in, that's fine. If you want to use your pattern and retrace it, I can still see mine. So I'm going to go ahead and use the liner brush with a little bit of thinned black paint. And I'm going to use just the tip of the brush. And I'm going to draw one line up. That's the top part of the eye. Or the top part of the V. I keep calling this like a V. There's the bottom part. Now my V is connected. And then let's just fill this in just a little bit. Start here at the tip of the V and work your way out. You don't wanna cover in the whole I, the whole V in other words. You only want a little bit of V for the side of the I, okay? Now I'm going to kind of remove the black from my brush, but I still wanna have a liner brush with this time we're gonna use our gray and we're just gonna put a base down of our eyebrow. The eyebrow for Santa is gonna be just like this. We're gonna have a base of our gray. So I'm just gonna start here at what would be like the bridge of the nose, the inset of the eye right above the eye. And I'm just gonna tap on, I'm wider when I start and I'm gonna come down and get smaller as I go away from like the bridge of the nose. So I've got a chunky, um, almost 
let's see, what should we say? A triangle. It's chunky and it's tri almost like a triangle or a rainbow shape and eyebrow shape. And that was done with my gray. So your medium gray, your black and white mixture, your classic French gray, whatever you have. And now I'm gonna let that all set up and dry for a moment. So let's go ahead and move now on to our red areas. I'm going to mix um, some apple red and to that I'm going to add some licorice. So I'm gonna bring some of my apple red down here closer to me. I'm gonna to touch the licorice, just a tiny little bit of black. Remember black goes a long way. And I'm going to mix that black into my red until I get a beautiful burgundy. Now you could use a burgundy, you could use berry wine, you can use true burgundy. There's so many beautiful burgundy colors, but I always find it's fun to kind of mix colors every now and then. And so <clears throat> for tonight's sake, we're gonna go ahead and mix a beautiful burgundy. And I like that. Be careful not to go too, too dark, but you want a nice red burgundy. And now I'm gonna go ahead and clean my palette knife. And we're gonna start working on the red areas of his coat. I'm gonna go back to my old faithful of my number 12 flat brush. And let's start here at the hat. So when I get ready to shade the hat area, I'm going to double load um, this brush. So I'm gonna start out with our local color or our base color, which is my apple red. <clears throat> I'm going to add this new burgundy color that we mixed to the side of the brush. And then I'm going to keep that burgundy side of the brush along the outside shape of our hat. So all along this area and along the gray. So let's go ahead and get the brush loaded up. <clears throat> Again, this is my number 12 flat brush, loading it with our local color, our red, apple red. And then I'm going to load just a side of that into that beautiful burgundy that we just mixed. Now, as you get started, you might find that maybe your burgundy isn't dark enough. You could always come back and add a little more black if you'd like. <clears throat> so I'm going to start here upside down. I turned my work and I'm simply going to pat that burgundy on the hat as I come up next to that gray. So can you see I started shading that hat already? This is all done with this burgundy mix. And if you're doing just a small amount of shading um, with this red and this burgundy, maybe you don't mix the color up in a separate pile like this. Maybe you just constantly go back and brush mix your paintbrush. Chris, I've got a question for you. Sure. Could moon yellow be mixed with a color to create something close to yellow ochre? Um, yes, I would take and add just a little bit of your Pueblo, just a small amount. I think that would work okay. And you can see now I went around the gray of the fur along the bag and I am kind of came up to this top part here. Now I'm going to come across where our band or our stripe is. And this is just lots of short little choppy strokes. This is, and by having that base color, our red in our brush, it's allowing us to beautifully blend that shading color into the hat. Base color. Always work with a little bit of wet on wet with that base color in your brush at the same time and you'll find that you'll get a much smoother blend of colors. So now if you look at mine, you can see that his hat or the base of his hat is already shaded and we can't forget the little stocking cap. So let's do that right up here. Again, keeping that burgundy color right up next to the outside edges, next to the pom-pom, and next to the band there. So here's my hat. All right, now let's move down to where his arm is here. There's a little bit as it's leaning more towards his front or his chest area here. And what we're going to do is have more shading in this chest area here, right up next to the, the cuff of his fur and where the bag is going over his shoulder. 
down to his elbow and also on the wrist area of the coat. So we're gonna go here all the way down at the elbow and then I kind of stop and don't go the full length underneath here. And then I come back up here right where the coat meets the fur. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, it's just short choppy little strokes using that burgundy color that we've mixed. Patting that on and it's blending as you're patting it on. Coming down right along the elbow and then kind of stopping a little bit. I'm gonna bring a little bit more here to separate our arm from our chest. And the last section on that arm is coming across where the fur meets the wrist area of his uh, little coat or his jacket, his sleeve, I should say. All right, I'm gonna load my brush again. I'm bringing in the apple red and our blending color, our shading color. Now let's not forget this tiny little like triangle shape on the back of his jacket that gets shaded in on the whole little triangle. And then we're gonna shade underneath this arm across the belt line and up around the, the bottom of the fur here of his sleeve. So let's do this little corner here in the back of his coat. And we're gonna shade all of that. And then I'm going to begin shading underneath the arm, <clears throat> across the top of the belt, and then underneath that arm there, or underneath the uh, cuff. Then on his bottom of his coat, <clears throat> all we're gonna do on there is we're gonna go across the front of his coat, underneath the belt line, around the bag and to the back, and then we're gonna come across the top of the fur. So basically we're shading this whole outside edge of that shape. And that shape is almost kind of like a big square and or a big um, maybe rectangle shape. So short choppy strokes all the way around the outside edge of this last little section of his coat. Just patting that on. I hope you all are enjoying this class tonight and looking forward to displaying your piece in your home when you're done painting. If you are a member of our Let's Paint community, I cannot wait to see your pieces. Be sure and take a picture, maybe even where you have it on display in your home and post it in our group. I'd love to be a cheerleader for you and, and make some very kind comments about your work tonight. If you're not yet a member of our Let's Paint community, what I'm talking about is Plaid has a wonderful Learn to Paint community called Let's Paint with Plaid. It's on Facebook. Look us up, click join, and you will have the best time. We teach in that community all the time. You're going to make so many friends with other artists and you're gonna have a great time. Let's paint with plaid. And Stephen, you might, I might ask you to put that in the chat for everyone. Yep, can do. Okay, all right, let's move on folks. Um, what I want to do now is before we go into our details of our hair and the bag and so on, I wanna get this black on here. So I'm gonna switch real, real quick right now to my three quarter inch flat brush. And what I'm going to do is load my three quarter, flint, uh, three quarter inch flat brush, sorry, with our black. Um, so that again, that's pure black or licorice. And we're just using that chisel edge of the brush to come up right real close to your design and go around as smooth as you can. You see how fast that happened just by using a larger brush Again, it's a three quarter inch flat and I'm using that chisel edge just to kind of move that brush 
along that area. And you'll see, you'll be able to paint this in really quickly. So let's go ahead and go around our Santa now with our black. And this, if you felt like you went outside of the lines when you were doing the red of his coat, this is where you can kind of clean up some of those edges if you want. I go with my chisel edge first, going around the design, and then I come back with the flat of the brush to fill in outside of that. But use that chisel edge to kind of go in as smooth as you can and as close as you can, doing a nice smooth line next to your pattern. All right. And I just keep going around the entire Santa until we get this black background on. And this is another way to explain why I mounted mine because I'm using not a canvas. I can't, I don't have the edges to hang on to. I have, uh, my canvas is a canvas panel tonight. So rather than trying to hold on to that canvas panel, while I've got this wet black now next to my edges, it would be getting my fingers full of black paint, right? So this is why I mounted it onto a piece of illustration board first. And I can make nice smooth lines and without getting my fingers in the paint. And if you're painting along with me tonight, I'm sure right now you are probably getting that shock and wow and amazement. When you start getting this black next to the contrast of the red, the colors just pop and it looks so beautiful. Don't you all think so? I think this black background is just such a beautiful statement. If you need to switch to a smaller brush when you get into some of the tight areas, like inside the loop here of near the pom-pom and the stocking cap, feel free to do that. If not, challenge yourself to use this, this same large brush in a small area, and I think you'll find it will go very quickly for you. Just go slow in those areas that might be tight spaces. And when I get out into the area where I'm not using the chisel edge and I'm using more the flat of the brush, I tend to use a lot more pressure in my brush stroke because then I'm really working that paint into the weave of the canvas. I just need to go around my star and down the tree. Now, if you are painting along with me tonight and maybe you enjoy painting at a little bit of a slower pace, by all means, I don't want you to be uncomfortable. Work at your own pace. This class is being recorded and you'll be able to complete yours with the recording later if that's more comfortable for you. I, if painting this black background is taking a little bit longer, I would recommend that you do the right side of your canvas at least so that you can put the tree in on top of the black, all right? If you don't wanna do the left side and save that for later when we are off camera, by all means do that, but at least get the black on in and around your star and what will be our tree area, okay? Learning to use that chisel edge of your brush to become a friend is what's really gonna help you as you are learning to paint because that chisel edge of your brush can do an awful lot of work for you. How are we doing, Stephen? Any other questions? I think we're good. Okay. I wonder how many friends are painting with us tonight. I am almost done with the black of the background, but don't wash your brushes. If you're ahead of me, hang on to the black in your brush. if anyone's painting faster than me tonight. 
and perhaps you've already got your background done. I am almost down to the bottom of mine here, <clears throat> working around the trunk of the tree. And I've got to do just a little bit here inside where the mitten and the fur trim is and where the end of the bag opening is. There we go. All right, now I said don't clean your brush out if you've got all of your black done like I do for the background. We have a black belt on Santa and that's the part we haven't yet painted. So while we still have the black in our brush, even though this is a large three quarter inch brush, use the chisel edge. Now, if you need to go ahead and drop down to a, maybe your number 12 again, but use that brush to the best of your ability to get in there and paint this belt and make sure you do a nice smooth strokes as you're going around the uh, elbow of Santa's red there. And I'm gonna turn this upside down so I can now use the chisel edge of my brush and do the bottom of the belt. Chris, can you mention the brand of uh, the brush you're using one more time? Sure. I am using a brush, um, a series of brushes tonight. They're green handles and they are made by Plaid. They are the Folk Art One Stroke brushes. Um, they have beautiful um, synthetic blend bristles and they have such a beautiful snap and response uh, when you are using your pressure, they snap back up to a nice chisel edge. When you're doing stroke work, they are just beautiful. I love them. They're my my favorite go-to brush. And I'm using a pack that is um, 10 different brushes in one brush set. All right, folks. I'm now I'm done with my black and on the belt, don't forget the inside of where the belt buckle is. So I just went right out into my outside area here and I came in and did like a little square. So now I think we're ready to move on since we got that black in there. I'm gonna not hold, um, actually this side's already dry. I'm not gonna hold this side cause it's still pretty wet. Let's go back to working on some details in our Santa. So I'm gonna pick up my workhorse tonight, which is the number 12 flat brush. And let's work on this bag. Let me share with you that the bag has some shading. If we think about this being a face of a clock, maybe about from 10 o'clock all the way around the bottom and back up to like the top where it meets the arm here. So all of this is gonna be shaded. We're gonna have some shading where it narrows here where his hand is, his mitten is. And then we'll have some shading coming out from underneath the mitten. And when I shaded this, I loaded my brush up with our base color, which is our yellow ochre. And then I loaded it with a little bit of our Pueblo. And I used that Pueblo as my shading. And I want you to look that there's lots and lots of little texture going on this way. And the texture is created just simply, here's my yellow ochre in my flat brush. I'm gonna just scoop into or touch into and pull out a little bit. So I end up with just a little bit of Pueblo on the yellow ochre loaded brush, okay? So I've got a little bit of Pueblo on there and I am just going to swish and pat, swish and pat and keep constantly picking up a little bit more of my yellow ochre or maybe even a little bit more of my Pueblo. We want this to be very textured and I'm just, you can see, I'm just kind of very lackadaisical moving the brush around like this. And this is kind of what we call a slip slap technique. So I am slipping and slapping and bringing that stroke work into that bag, okay? If you wanna make it a little bit darker, you can do the same thing like we did before with our tree trunk and add just a tiny, tiny bit of black. You don't wanna to add too much black, but black and Pueblo is gonna give you a little bit darker brown and you can even come back in and put a little bit of a darker brown in here. 
I'm just kind of using short little choppy strokes. Again, I'm using my base color of my yellow ochre. And then I'm also just shortly chopping with the Pueblo and the, or the Pueblo and a little bit of our black. Just creating some texture and making that bag look a little bit darker. A little bit darker could also make the bag look like it's a little more worn. Make the bag look like he's carried it for many, many years. Maybe Mrs. Claus needs to sew him a new bag. Okay. While I have that brown in my brush, I'm now going to come up where it gets real skinny here at the top of his mitten. And I'm going to shade that and just pull on the chisel edge pull out some strokes, almost like you're pulling out little gathers in the fabric. Let me show you so you can see close. I just kind of pulled out some of that darker color using the chisel edge of my brush at the top where the thumb is. We're gonna do the same thing here at the bottom with the little bit that's extending beyond here. And I'm just gonna pull again using that chisel edge I'm pulling and lifting as I pull it out so that I get a little bit more shading there. We're kind of creating some folds in the fabric, if you will, from where he's cinched it up or he's gathered it up and he's held it in his hand. That same darker mixture is going to go on the inside of this opening here. So again, I'm using the chisel edge of my brush and I'm creating kind of the opening then. So now it looks like you can see up and inside this little opening here. And now I'm going to wipe that out of my brush. I'm gonna add the base color of our bag. The local color is our yellow ochre back into that three quarter inch flat brush. And now I'm gonna add some white. So the wicker white or titanium white is gonna be on my brush along with the yellow ochre. And we're gonna add some highlights to this bag. And with this, I'm gonna do that same kind of slip slap because I wanna show you there's texture again. Remember there's texture in this bag. So we're just gonna slip slap some of this lighter color now on the bag kind of patting some of that lighter color along that edge. And then I'm kind of patting it down into the bag. And you can even stroke over some of the darker areas that you've already painted. So we're really putting some texture now onto that bag, just letting some of this color glide over the top. We just want this bag to look like it's kind of worn. <clears throat> And I'm bringing that lighter color right up along the top of his hat there. And with that same light color, yellow ochre and the wicker white, we want to come down to this opening part, keeping the white on that open edge. We're just gonna kind of pat along that so that we lighten that opening. And I'm gonna bring a little bit of lightness on the bag right up here along the shoulder line. And that's all we're gonna do the bag. I, I want that bag to kind of look a little bit more rustic. It needs to look maybe a little shop worn. It needs to look like it's been carrying many, many toys through the years. I'm gonna come back and fix this little bit right here and darken that one little corner. Okay, all right, now let's move on. Let's start working on the um, beard and the hairline. That's all done with your liner brush. And we're gonna do that first before we do the fur because if you think about it, the hat and the fur is on top of his beard. 
So we're gonna start on the beard first and then we'll work up to the hairline. When I use my liner brush, I always thin it down with a little bit of water. So I'm gonna dip my brush into some water <clears throat> and I'm gonna bring it down here. I'm gonna bring some of my wicker white down here. Even though my water might be dirty, I'm gonna still thin it with a little bit of my water here. And I want this paint to flow from the liner brush and we're gonna make little individual strands of hair. So I'm gonna to touch my paper towel for a minute and then I'm gonna come back and refill my brush. And when we look at this um, beard, a lot of times you think of the beard being like one long piece of hair from the mustache all the way out to these little tip edges. I find it better if you work at the tip and do short little overlapping strokes working your way up the beard and ending up towards the mustache, it's, you're gonna find a, a better painted beard. So we're gonna start out here at these little wispy ends. And I'm holding mine up if you haven't seen the detail. We're gonna start on those wispy ends of the beard first. And so what I'm going to do, again, my liner brush is full of some fluid white paint. I'm gonna start here where I have my little black kind of um, meet, meeting where the gray is. And I'm just gonna do some short little pulls. Can you see that? They're just short little pulls. I'm like starting the hairline and I want some of these to curl up in like a grouping, if you will. I'm using just the tip of my brush. This is a beautiful liner brush that I'm working with and I'm getting beautiful little um, airy strokes of hair. And then I'm gonna continue working with that, working up the beard, working up towards the uh, mustache area. Short little choppy strokes. I'm overlapping one on top of another. And you're gonna see that it's gonna flow almost like it was long, smooth, one strokes here, all one strand of hair. They're over, actually gonna overlap a little bit. And if you wanna add some little free, oh, I don't know, flyaway pieces of hair from his beard out onto the black, do so. When you get up to that mustache area, go beyond the mustache and start going into the hair area. And you can do some short little pieces of hair actually curl some out onto your cheeks, onto the flesh area. Load your brush every so often as you feel you need to. And I'm gonna show you mine now. So if you wanna take a moment and look up at mine, my beard is just a whole bunch of series of long overlapping little strokes. And here's the finished one. So the more white strokes you put on, the whiter the beard it's gonna be. The fewer strokes where you see more of your gray showing through, then your beard won't be quite as pure white. So it's up to you to determine how pure a white uh, you want. I like to still see some of my gray showing through. I like that texture. Maybe Santa hasn't completely turned white yet. While we have the white in our brush, let's go ahead and calm down that eyebrow that is now just your solid gray. So just add some little dotty strokes on now on top of that gray, keeping some texture to the um, eyebrow. And that little bit of an eye, the profile of an eye needs a little highlight. So I'm gonna think about this and highlight, he's looking kind of like at that star. So I'm gonna highlight at like maybe one o'clock. Think about this, the distance on the face of a clock, one o'clock. And we're gonna just, just put a tiny little dot. All right. Okay, now let's go ahead and move on to our, our fur and then we'll come back to our mustache. I want this all to kind of dry first. The fur is done very, very quickly with a stencil brush. And I have just a basic flat stencil brush here with me. 
Um, and it doesn't matter to me what size I'm using, maybe a three quarter, no, no, I'm not. I'm sorry, using a three eighths inch uh, stencil brush, but any stencil brush will work. I'm going to dab, I'm gonna stipple right here into this white that I've been working with. And I'm going to stab or pounce up and down into that puddle of paint so that I end up with some white on the bottom of that, on the bottom of that stencil brush, okay? Then I'm going to take a clean paper towel and I want to just tap it a few more times on my paper towel. I don't really wanna wipe it off. I just wanna tap it to lightly remove it. And I end up with a stencil brush that does not have quite as much white paint on it. I'm going to use a pouncing effect. I'm stabbing the painting and I'm going to go everywhere where I have fur and I'm going to stab and pounce. And I want these little wispy bits. Can you see on the outside edge there? I want these little wispy bits to kind of give my fur some texture, to give my fur uh, some flyawayness, if you will. And look at how pretty that pom-pom is now. It's starting to turn out really fun and wispy. And I'm going to do a few um, pounces, if you will, on all of the fur areas. I'm going to cover some of this gray. Some of the gray is still going to show. And then we'll come back and put one more application, depending, again, how white you want your fur. Maybe you want your fur to be more gray and less white. But let's put one application on. See how quickly that goes? We're just pouncing straight up and down on all of these fur areas, allowing that to pounce out over on top of the red or a little bit maybe out onto the black of the background here. We're going to do the same thing here. Let me move it up so that you can see the bottom. And you can see I'm not pouncing in one direction. I am overlapping and I'm moving about so that I'm not repeating a pattern per se. And by applying pressure when I'm pouncing, I'm allowing that stencil brush to kind of spray out a little bit more. So that creates that real fun wispiness or airiness on the outside edge. So my fur areas all now have one coat and it's quite a bit darker gray than what my finished one is here. So I'm gonna come back and give it a little bit more white this time and maybe don't wipe it off on your paper towel, go straight to your piece and maybe just go in the center. So leave some of the original grade white on the outside edges, but just pounce to the interior of each of these designs with your solid white. And that really just brightens up the fur. Okay. Pick up a little bit more white. Very quick. Don't labor over it. It's just a little bit of whiteness now added to your fur. And now I'm going to go ahead and clean that brush because we don't need that anymore. And get that clean and dry and set aside. All right, let's get moving on to our green areas right now. We have green out onto our palette and the color that we used for our mittens and this little heart was our basic green here, our classic green. So I'm gonna load my brush with my classic green and then I'm going to side load into our lighter bright yellow green, which is my lime green. And I am going to have a brush that has both the darker green and the yellow light green in the same brush at the same time. On his mitten, we are going to highlight the top of the thumb and then across the front where his fingers are with that lighter green color. So I've got my 
plastic green and my lime green and my flat brush. And I'm going to pat, pat, pat. Remember, we're always patting those strokes to kind of highlight or to shade. Adding a little bit more of that lime green, yellowy green to the outside edge of our mitten. Okay. And so I went across the thumb and then that full, almost like a half circle of our mitten. And there's a detailed shot. When we look at this little heart that's out here on our hat, if you look at the top half of the heart, that has a little bit of our yellow green, our lime green on there. So while we are still working with the lime green in your brush, keep the lime green side of your brush to the top of the heart. And what you're gonna do is just kind of follow the shape of that heart, that little half, half um, little hump if you will, the top half of the heart. And that's all I'm going to do to that heart. I've got the lime green at the top of the heart, just to highlight the top of the heart. And we've got our green here on our mitten. Now let's look at, while we have the green going on, let's look at our little Charlie Brown type tree here. <laughs> He's really kind of fun. And this is all done with the same flat brush it's loaded with our two greens, again, our classic green and our lime green. And what I did, here is our tree trunk. I am going to have the classic green and the lime green in the brush. I'm gonna start out on the trunk. And it doesn't matter to me whether you start at the top or start at the bottom. If you start at the bottom, they're longer strokes and they get smaller when they come up to the top of the tree. I am touching the brown trunk when I start my stroke and I'm just going to use the chisel edge of the brush. I'm sorry, you're probably seeing the top of my hand. Chisel edge of the brush. I'm going to put some pressure on the brush to kind of get a little fat stroke and then I'm just going to pull it out and lift up. I'm going to touch, apply pressure, pull it out and lift up. Touch, apply pressure, pull it out and lift up. This is a very Charlie Brownish type tree. It doesn't have to be exact. You can have one um, tree branch across from the other one on each of the trunk here. Or if you wanna have a gap and don't fill in the pairs of trees, branches like I have, this is your tree. This is your Charlie Brown tree. You get to make it as Charlie Brown-ish as you want. So touch and swoop out, touch and swoop out and kind of swoop out and down. Stop and refill your brush every so often. If it helps, go down one side of the tree at one time. And then remember too, to have a long uh, trunk here at the bottom. I would say that's probably maybe three inches up from the bottom is where my last little branch was. So don't go all the way down to the bottom. In other words, this is a Charlie Brownie tree and we just want to have, there we go. We just want to have it look fun. If it's easier for you when you do the other side, if because you're used to stroking out, turn your work upside down and stroke out or keep it the right side up and pull out. Remember to pull out about the same distance on either side of the tree. Stop and reload your brush as you need to. Your fatter stroke is when it's touching the brown. Okay. I'm going to clean that brush out or clean the green out of my brush. Let's go back now to the Santa fur. When you look at this um, fur, it's got tiny little black flecks in it. And this is a real fur. Um, it's called, uh, is it ermine? Um, I may not say that right, but it is an actual real fur. And what we're gonna do now is put these little tiny black hash marks on here. This is done with your liner brush and thinned black paint. And I want to bring this up so you can see there are two little that's it. How do you say that though? Is it, I know it's not ermine. Um, oh my gosh. 
I can't remember now how to pronounce that, but that is the ermine. That's it. Thank you, Vel Vita, 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 Vita. Thank you, Vita. Ermine, that's what this is. So we are going to put these little black hash marks in here, liner brush, thinned licorice paint, and they're two little slash marks. Notice my slash marks. They're not in the same direction. They're about the same distance apart, my two slash marks, but they're every which way around the whole white, okay? So let's go ahead and thin down some of our black, get our liner brush full of this thinned paint. This too goes very, very quickly once you get started and once you have your brush full of the thinned black paint. And we're gonna do this everywhere. It's in the pom-pom, on the fur around his hat. And it's just two little slash marks. And I changed the direction of my slash marks. And don't overdo it, but you wanna have enough that it shows that you are actually making this type of a fur. To the right, to the left, upside down, right side up, sideways. They're just simply little black slash marks. Just use the very tip of your brush to create that extra little bit of texture here in your fur. These are very short in length. All different directions. The key here, I think, to tell you is to make sure that your brush is properly loaded with paint that is the right consistency. You want to make sure that you thin down that black so that you can make these little hash marks very quickly. All righty, folks, let's now take this liner brush. I'm not gonna worry too much about cleaning it in water, but I'm gonna wipe that black out of my brush. Let's pick up some of our gray. And on Santa's belt, I gave him a couple little loops or holes, belt notches, if you will. You can use your liner brush and just make three or four little dots of your gray in the center of our black to create that belt loop. Oh, and maybe one inside the where the buckle is going to be. And I'm going to add a little bit of burgundy here. Just kind of straighten up the shape here of my buckle. And our buckle, let's go ahead and paint that buckle in with our um, yellow ochre first. And that is going to be our treasure gold as well. So I'm just putting in a gold buckle. And I just used my liner brush that I had here when I was trimming up the shape of my belt buckle. Okay. All right, folks, let's go. While we have the liner brush in our hand and I cleaned out my yellow ochre, let's put on his mustache. And that will be one of the last things that we do on our Santa here before we trim out his star and his belt buckle. I'm using wicker white and my mustache is going to be stroked from what would be underneath his nose out towards the tip of his mustache. I'm not gonna stroke from the tip going into the nose. Remember, I'm stroking from the nose going outwards. So I am going to start here underneath the nose at the top of the mustache and just do a long smooth line out to the edge. Let me show you that up close. So I started on the top of the mustache now I'm going to stroke on the bottom of the mustache. So I'm starting here under the nose and all the way out to the edge. So basically, I kind of outlined the shape of that mustache. And now it's white against white. It's the white paint against the white of our canvas, but I'm just going to kind of fill that in. And now we have a mustache. All right, folks. Now let's go back to our... 
Treasure Gold. I say back to, we haven't gotten it out yet. Treasure Gold, if you're not yet familiar, this is a beautiful product from Plaid. I'll bring it up so you can see the label. It's Treasure Gold. This is the color gold. Treasure Gold is the most um, heavily pigmented metallic paint on the market. It's water-based, it's non-toxic, and I'm going to pour out just a tiny little bit of Treasure Gold. It is, here we go. Whew. And it is wonderful. It is so beautiful. It's the best gold I love to paint with. And what I'm going to do with the Treasure Gold using my workhorse of the night, it's my um, number 12 flat brush. Let's go ahead now and give our, our gold star a beautiful, beautiful metallic gold. And because we have the undercoat of our yellow ochre on there, the gold is going to be absolutely beautiful. And I sometimes like to give it a second coat. So if your first coat is maybe not enough, and maybe you might still see some of your yellow ochre shining through, let it dry for a moment and then come back and give it a second coat. Something else I sometimes do is I'll put the treasure gold down. And then if I want a sparkly star, I'll come back with glitterific or I'll come back with a hologram glitter and I'll put that on top of our gold. And then it really has a pizzazz and a wow factor. I'll also take this treasure gold on a smaller flat brush or I've just picked up my liner and I'm going to go ahead now and paint the belt buckle with our gold. And I want to share with you one more thing before we finish our project tonight. Those of you that love glitter, I know many, many people do. I did not put it on the supply list and I didn't paint it on my sample here. However, I think this particular project just screams for glitter sometimes. And so I wanna share with you a couple different glitters that we have that might be kind of fun for you to add to your um, painting if you have these at home. Folk Art Extreme Glitter. Let me bring this up. There's the label so you can see it. This is the hologram. Um, this is very prismatic. And Extreme Glitter is a, is a glitter paint that has sugar fine glitter. It's very, very tiny, tiny particles of glitter in here. This gives you a very beautiful glitter effect, um, but it's not an over the top glitter. It's just a very solid little simple glitter, but it's very, very beautiful. You could even put this um, extreme glitter hologram on top of your metallic gold. You're not hiding your gold. You'll be able to see the color of the gold underneath this, but you're gonna get some extra sparkle on your project. You could also use the Glitterific, and here's the label. Glitterific is a glitter paint that is in a clear base, and it is a glitter that has so many different glitter particles. It has the sugar fine glitter. It has the big glitter flakes. It has so much pizzazz and so much wow. And it dries, it's in a clear base, so it dries clear. And this is also another beautiful glitter that you could then add to your project. I sometimes even use the hologram extreme glitter, which is the sugar fine glitter. I sometimes even put that on the fur areas. That I think would be absolutely beautiful if you wanted to dazzle up the fur here on Santa. Um, Glitterific also comes in a fine glitter. This, and I'll show this, it's Glitterific Fine. This is also something that's very, very prismatic and very beautiful. This is the silver. And um, you can see the silver has many different colors in there. Again, it's a very, very fine uh, glitter particles. This would be beautiful also if you wanted to jazz up maybe the fur areas. This extreme glitter comes in a peridot. This with a little touch on top of your green if you wanted to make your tree sparkle would be actually pretty. And of course, don't forget reds. Reds are available in, in the um, glitterific fine, in the glitterific and the extreme glitter. And if you wanted to put any red pizzazz somewhere, let's say you didn't do a green heart, let's say maybe you did a red heart, you could even glitter that red heart here on the end of his hat. And you know what I think as I'm talking about that, I think I forgot to tell you, there's one little bit of gold that's a horizontal band here. 
at the top and the bottom of our green heart. This, uh, we're just kind of outlining that white band. One more thing I did was I took my liner brush with that thin black paint. And just to help define the areas a little bit more, I took this and I outlined the bag. Now the bag, most the bulk of the bag is up against a black background. So you're really not gonna see it that much, but you might start out here on the black and then come around and outline the bottom of his bag. And then you can turn your work and continue outlining up around the um, top of his shoulder here. This just kind of brought that bag a little bit more to life. And I did the same thing with outlining. So we went up underneath here. Now you're gonna go across the top here of the bag till you come out to the black area of the background. And one more thing you could do is separate this arm a little bit more. So you might come from the bag down to the belt around the uh, elbow and then back up to the top and then on the other side of the arm also. And I think I also outlined the mitten, the outside of the thumb and around the part where the fingers are. And that was all I outlined. I didn't worry about outlining the outside edges. Now, if you want to clean up an edge, maybe you got some of your red out onto the black or you, you know, kind of messed up a little bit, you can always come back and use the black as your background to kind of dress up anything that you want to do. Do we have any last minute questions, Stephen? Sorry, I accidentally clicked out on a new page. I think we are good on questions, Chris. Okay. Well, Nicole, then if we can go back face on, I'd just love to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for attending our class this evening. I know we ran over our, our hour, but we always do when I am teaching. Um, I hope you enjoyed Star of Wonder, Santa. And I can't wait to see you. Um, please do take a picture of yours. Share it in our Facebook group, Let's Paint with Plaid. Use the hashtag um, Let's Paint Challenge and also make it with Michaels because Michaels would like to see your classwork from this evening as well. If you have not yet joined our group, I think we shared it in our post. I talked about it earlier. Um, the name of the group is Let's Paint with Plaid. We'd love for you to come join us. We teach there all the time and we have more projects planned for 2024. So without further ado, I just want to thank you all, wish you all a very happy, happy holiday season. Merry Christmas to one and all, and we'll see you in 2024. Good night, everybody.